All right. In this question, we are asked to use theorem 1 to obtain a general solution for this given system with an initial condition. And let's recall that theorem 1 says that the solution x to the system is going to be a linear combination of e to the lambda 1 t times v1 and e to the lambda 2 t times v2, where lambda 1 and 2 are the eigenvalues of the matrix, and v1 and v2 are their respective eigenvectors. Let me go and write that down. So to get started, I need to find the eigenvalues for my given matrix. So I'm going to take the determinant of that given matrix minus lambda times the identity matrix and set that equal to 0. So basically, I want to subtract lambda along the main diagonals. and set that equal to 0. So let's recall the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. I want to take the product on the main diagonal and subtract from the other diagonal. So I have quantity 4 minus lambda times quantity negative 1 minus lambda minus 6 equals 0. I'm going to multiply everything out. So I've got lambda squared minus 3 lambda minus 10 equals 0. That means I can factor to lambda minus 5 and lambda plus 2. So my two eigenvalues are 5 and negative 2. I'm going to put those in so that I will have them for later. And now I just want to find the eigenvectors for each of those. Let's start by finding the eigenvector for lambda equals 5. So for the first row, I have 4 minus 5, which is negative 1, 1. Then I have 6 and negative 1 minus 5, which is negative 6. I'm going to reduce the second row by a factor of negative 6 to get negative 1, 1, which matches the top row, so I'm just going to subtract the first row from the second, and I will get a row of zeros. And then I want to multiply the top row by negative 1 so that I can have a leading one. So I have the matrix 1, negative 1, 0, 0. I know my second component, x2, is going to be a free variable. I'm going to call it t. And I can back substitute x1 minus t equals 0. That means x1 is also equal to t. And I can write that as the vector solution, vector 1, 1 times t. That vector 1, 1 is going to be my v1, the associated eigenvector. So I'm going to go and put that up there, and then let's move over to the other board to find the second eigenvector. For lambda equals negative 2. So now I'm going to have 4 plus 2, 6, and then 1 in the top row, and then 6, and negative 1 plus 2, which gives me 1. So I'm going to reduce both rows by a factor of 6. And then I can subtract the first row from the second to clear the bottom row. So again, I have a free variable for x2. I'm going to call it t. And I can back substitute x1 plus 1 over 6t equals 0 x1 equals negative 1, 6, t. So I can go ahead and write that as a vector solution. And 
negative 1 over 6 times 1 t. So I just need to put that back in over here. And so my general solution is c1 e to the 5t times 1 1 plus c2 e to the negative 2t times negative 1 over 6 1. So now I just want to use the initial condition that I was given. But first, let's rewrite the second vector. If I multiply both components by negative 6, I'll still have the same vector, but it'll be a little bit easier to work with as we go into using that initial condition. So that becomes 1, negative 6. Just a little bit easier to work with. And I know that x of 0 is 7, 0. So let's move again over here. And plug in x, plug in 0 for x. So I have c1 e to the 0, which is just 1. So c1 times the vector 1, 1, plus c2 times the vector 1, negative 6. And I just want to solve for c1 and c2. And I can use an augmented coefficient matrix, so I'm going to go and set that up. This is going to be these vectors as columns set equal to the vector 7, 0. And let's get started by subtracting the first row from the second. So 1 minus 1 is 0. Negative 6 minus 1 is negative 7. And 0 minus 7 is negative 7. And I can reduce the second row by a factor of negative 7 to get 0, 1, and 1. Now, let's go ahead and subtract the second row from the first so I can have the matrix in reduced row echelon form. So that 1 sticks around, and then I have 1 minus 1 is going to be 0, and 7 minus 1 gives me 6. So I've solved for C1 and C2. They are 6 and 1, respectively. So I can use this to write the solution x. And I'm just going to go ahead and combine everything into one matrix. So I am all set. I have actually done one better than finding the general solution. I've used the initial conditions to find our solution x, so we are all set.